cat party. Please welcome our contestants. Player one. Yeah! Player two. <laughs> Player three. <laughs> and now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trevet. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Let's take you right now into the Jeopardy round. Clues are worth $200 to $1,000 in these categories. You are what you eat. Recently discovered presidential ads. Biblical abominations. Birth and death. MapQuest. And Papa was a rolling stone. Player one, you're in command of the board as we continue right now. Ah, yes, my sweet, if you eat this sticky liquid, comb and all, I'll definitely call you my this. Let's hear it, player one. Yes. <laughs> Please pick a... Eat too many of this original gourmet jelly bean, and its name may describe your tummy. Player one. Correct. <laughs> Select again. If I eat a frankfurter before I show off my skiing stunts, you have every reason to call me one of these. Yes, player one? Yeah! Yep. <laughs> player one. Lewis Browning ate more than 22,000 of these cream-filled hostess cakes. If you did the same, We'd call you one. Player one? Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> Player one. If you spend your last dime on one of these New Orleans-style hero sandwiches, you really will turn into one. Let's hear it, Player one. Yes. <laughs> You again, player one. He said a nation half slave and half free can't exist. I say he's wrong. I'm Stephen Douglas, and I approve this message. Yes, player two. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's get back in. So what if he's the first West Point grad president? Some say he drinks. You decide. I'm Horace Greeley, and I approve this message. It's player one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Player one. In 1814, this general had a pirate, Jean Lafitte, help him in New Orleans. What's next? I'm John Quincy Adams, and I approved this message. Player one. That is correct. <laughs> Player one. You elect him, I say in seven months the economy will be in shambles. I'm Al Smith, and I approve this message. Yes, player two. You got it. <laughs> All right, let's... Alex Hamilton wants him to be president. Them's fighting words. I'm Aaron Burr, and I approve this message. Yes, player one. Right. <laughs> All right, let's get back into this. Leviticus chapter 11 says, Most insects that creep or fly are an abomination. But this eighth plague is kosher. Okay, player three. Right. <laughs> A lot of clues. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 13 declares that this bird of prey, later a symbol of Roman legions, is an abomination. Let's hear it, player one. 
Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo. All right, let's. Potpourri is not mentioned, but this burning perfume is an abomination, according to Isaiah chapter one, verse thirteen. Player one. We return to you. Leviticus chapter eleven verse ten says, "All that have not fins and these in the seas shall be an abomination." Let's hear it, player three. Aww. Good for you. <laughs> Where do we begin, player three? In Genesis. Chapter forty-six, verse thirty-four. Every shepherd is an abomination unto this kingdom that was known as Kemet. It's player two. That's yeah! correct. <laughs> player two. Where do we start? The number one cause of death in the United States isn't cancer, but disease of this organ. Player one. Right. Okay, let's get back in. A cuneiform tablet dating to 2000 BC is the first known reference to the type of birth associated with this Roman leader. Okay, player two. That is correct. <laughs> player two. The death in Death in Venice is from this waterborne disease. That has caused several pandemics. Let's hear it, player two. Right. <laughs> you get to pick again. Louise Brown, the first baby conceived as the result of in vitro fertilization, was born in this decade. Let's hear it, player one. Yeah. Hey, you're right. <laughs> Where do we begin? For 2011, the ten highest fertility rates were in countries on this continent. Yes, player three. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay, let's get back into this. To visit Sensoji Temple in this capital, cross Komagata Bridge, turn right. And walk north on the Nakamise Dori. Player three, you got it. <laughs> Player three, the drive from Denmark to Malmo in this country includes a five-mile stretch across the Oresund Bridge. Okay. Player two. That's right. Way to go. Okay, let's get back into the from Paris's Royal Saint Honoré Hotel. Walk a half mile down Rue Saint Honoré, turn right, and walk into its glass pyramid. It's player two. Good for you. <laughs> player two to visit San Marino. Take a winding road up Mount Titano, a short drive from Rimini in this country. Let's hear it, player three. Ah. <laughs> player three from Ulan Bator, go straight south to Wuhai, flip a left, and go about five hundred miles to reach this world capital. Player one. You are correct. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Player one, start us. Marcia Hunt was the mom of his first child, Karis. He had daughter number two, Jade, with Bianca. Okay, player two. Yeah! A lot of clues. This guitarist, originally named one daughter, Dandelion. She goes by Angela these days. Let's hear it, player one. Right, you are. 
Player one, where do we start? Answer, it's the Daily Double. And you have the lead. Decide on your wager, player one. Answer this. This bassist wed Mandy Smith. After the two split, his son dated Mandy's mom. He could have been stepdad to his ex-stepmom. That puts you even further ahead. Player one. Knock on this guitarist, Leah and Tyrone's dad, who joined the band in 1975. It's player two. Correct. <laughs> Let's have a look at the thousand dollar clue. Serafina's pop. He began manning the drums for the Stones in 1963. Okay, player three. That's correct. <laughs> the selection will be yours, player three, when we return from this break. Categories for the Double Jeopardy round are... Football. Somewhere. The Civil War. Conjunction Junction. Right on, soldier. And attraction. Player three, start us. This cup representing Canadian football supremacy was donated by the descendant of a tea namesake. Yes, player one? Yes. <laughs> Okay, let's get back. He caught the catch on January 10th, 1982. Let's hear it, player two. Yes. A lot of clues. This Cowboys wide receiver of the 1990s is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's player two. That's right. Way to go. Here's Jimmy. He'll show you. In this type of trick play, the quarterback hands off to a running back, who hands off to a tight end, going in the opposite direction. Player one? Yeah, good. All right, let's get back into this. To see this NFL team's home games at FedEx Field, take a shuttle bus from the Landover Metro stop. Player one? Yep. <laughs> Player one, you pick again, please. This strike-slip fault that runs through California is named for a lake that's in the rift. Player two. <laughs> right you are. Okay, let's get back into this. We are volunteering the information that Klingman's Dome is the highest point in this state. Let's hear it, player three. Correct. <laughs> All right, let's get back in. Johann Strauss Jr. conducted the Blue Danube Waltz publicly for the first time at a February 1867 concert in this city. Let's hear it, player three. Yes. <laughs> player three. Dating from medieval times, Gamlastan, Old Town, is the cradle of this Scandinavian capital. Okay, player two. Good. <laughs> Where do we begin, player two? <laughs> One of the daily doubles. You are currently in second place. Decide on your way. Answer. Chisago is a county in this state. 
as is hennepin. Player two, back to you for our next selection. All right, here with the clue is Sarah. At the 1863 Battle of Gettysburg, the Union's center line at Cemetery Ridge was hit by 12,000 Confederates who suffered 42% casualties in the skirmish known as This Man's Charge. Player one. Yeah! Good for you. <laughs> Okay, let's get back in. This national battlefield in Sharpsburg, Maryland commemorates the bloodiest single day of the Civil War. Player three? Yep. <laughs> Player three? Sherman's campaign for this city took three months in 1864. Player three? Right. <laughs> you get to pick again. In 1862, Confederate General Beauregard wanted Island Number 10 in this body of water held at all costs. Didn't happen. Okay, player one. <laughs> yeah, player one. The hopeless mud march in a Virginia downpour ended Burnside's command of the force called This Army. Okay, player three. Yep. Ah. <laughs> a lot of clues, a lot of categories, player three. Make a selection. This two-letter word is also a Pacific Northwest State's postal abbreviation. Okay, player one. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> Player one, this conjunction comes before rain, heat, and gloom of night in the United States Postal Service credo. Yes, Player two. You are correct. A lot of clues. Take away an eye from the end of a fabled Himalayan creature, and you get this conjunction. Player two. That's correct. <laughs> Select again. This three-letter conjunction is commonly replaced by a symbol in Jeopardy clues. Player one. That is correct. <laughs> All right, let's get back into this. This conjunction is also the symbol for a poisonous element. Player three? Right you are. <laughs> Player three? You start. A student at Sandhurst, he later served in British military intelligence before creating his British super spy. Yes, player two. <laughs> hey, you're right. A lot of clues. This author of Starship Troopers was a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. Okay, player one. Good. <laughs> Player one, start us. Answer. The other daily double. You are in first place. Decide on your wager, player one. The clue. Lou Wallace served as a major general in this war before penning Ben Hur. That puts you even further ahead. We return to you. Edward Gibbon was a captain in the Hampshire Grenadiers before writing the decline and fall of this empire. Okay, player two. Yeah, good. 
Okay, let's get back in. This Grecian fought at Salamis and Marathon. His 70 plays include the Oresteia and Prometheus Bound. Yes, player three? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> player three? Where do we start? Using adsorption. Yes, with a D. Activated charcoal in these military items attracts harmful chemical vapors. Okay, player two. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> player two. Female deep sea anglerfish use this, produced by bacteria, to attract prey. Let's hear it, player three. That's right, way to go. All right, let's get back. In a covalent bond, two atoms each contribute one of these to a pair, which is then attracted to the atom's nuclei. Player three? Right. Ah. <laughs> Player three? Bombicol. One of these attractant hormones is sort of the Calvin Klein obsession of the female silk moth. It's player two. That is correct. And now the $2,000 clue. Newton found that the degree of gravitational attraction between two masses varies inversely with the square of this. R. Let's hear it, player three. Aww. Good. <laughs> All three of you will participate in Final Jeopardy right after this. Here comes the Final Jeopardy, players. The category is this. Sports business. Please enter your wager. And the last clue? In 1993, this man said, What Phil and Nike have done is turn me into a dream. Your response? And that correct response will add... What did you put as your response? And this correct response will add how much to your score? What did you say? With that correct response, you will gain... This makes you our new champion, Player One, so congratulations! So long, everybody.